Hey everyone, welcome to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brennan, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. Happy Sunday once again. I hope everybody is staying calm, staying home, and staying safe, just like I am. And again, yes, I am still wearing navy blue. I have not accelerated myself to the point where I am wearing a lighter blue, but until election time, this is what I will be doing. Um, and uh, I, I, I will, I promise. I think next week I will start donning the light blue because the first presidential debate obviously is this coming week. So I'm going to have to be excited about it and kind of elevate myself. But if you are new to listening to this show, please go on to dwjphl.com for all of our social media links, links for our archive shows, as well as the Drinks with Jess swag. I will have a special election t-shirt uh, coming out soon, so make sure you check that out. You can also go on to bratnessenterprises.com slash be hyphen the hyphen voice for information about this show and all the others on the Be The Voice podcast network because apparently I spend my time producing podcasts and not sleeping. So that is for all of you. Um, but we are in unprecedented times. I'm sure most of us want to forget that 2020 ever happened. But with the lack of response from the federal government, the, the, uh, the action has been taken by our state and local officials. And I want everybody to remember that not only is this a major vote for your life presidential election, but it's our state and local representatives and leaders out there who have really been um, taking the reins on everything that we've, what we've been going through, including COVID, unemployment, um, the Black Lives Matter movements, everything possible. And here with me today, I am very, very honored to have Mayor Keffer, Mayor Barbara Ann Keffer, um, who is the mayor of my township, as well as Councilman Matt Silva, who has been on the show before, and he is also a representative of my township. Um, how are you guys doing today? Great. Today was a it was a busy day. We had a day of action for the census. Oh, nice. Even even after the Ninth Circuit Court's decision to extend the uh, the uh, the date when the census needs to be done, we're operating under. September 30th. Oh, wow. Now, see, I completed my census online, and I know that there has been uh, a little bit of confusion about the census, whether you should do it, whether you should not do it, how to do it, um, because obviously we do not have people coming around the neighborhoods now and, and taking the census. So did you see um, any differences, uh, Mayor Keffer, in how people were adapting to our new norm and being able to complete things like the census in our area. So I was trying to think back to 10 years ago, the last census, and I don't, I don't remember as much press, like, or, or like we have a full court press going, mm -hmm. probably not just in Upper Darby, but Delaware County and, and in Pennsylvania in general. We're trying to increase awareness of, of the census and that it's secure, it's mm -hmm. safe. And it's very necessary. We really want to get a great count here in Upper Darby. Mm -hmm. We believe we have more than 82,000 people living here. And oh, wow. we're that, um, you know, that, that we will qualify for the next 10 years for all the federal aid through, through grants and, and, you know, through grants, I guess, mostly um, that, that we need and that we um, are deserving of. So. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that it, uh, over the past, uh, and I'm going to say about two years since, um, since the, the administration, the federal administration, um, you know, had, um, you know, ICE enacted and everything else. I'm sure people were very afraid, um, especially here close to the Philadelphia area and in Upper Darby and Delaware County itself, um, to be a part of the census. But what can you say to people out there that, you know, since we have till September 30th, that makes it important for them to be counted because I'm assuming that that even being a part of the census does something to the voter registration process as well, doesn't it? It 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 uh, affects. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. Ann. No, no, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was uh, I worked on the census uh, ten years ago, and and there was apprehension then at that time among a lot of residents. Um, part of the area I had was. Uh, was east was eastern um, Upper Darby and and Yaden and, and and there were areas that are 
like higher immigrant populations, it's typically uh, difficult to to get them to respond. And again, 10 years ago was a much different political climate than it is now. Um, it, it's extremely important for like, well, funding is, is one of the most significant things. I think the mayor could speak to much better than I could, but but um, but yeah, also representation, uh, like how districts are drawn, the congressional districts, mm -hmm. how many congressional districts would be in the state, the state representative districts, um, by not counting urban populations as much. I mean, you're shifting a lot of weight to, um, well, basically probably to more rural areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's, it's, it's extremely, it, it's, it's frightening as it can be for people to talk to anyone that, is, you know, like if, if they're in a group that's vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, it's really critical that they do. I, I you know, it, it, you know, if, if anyone's there, I urge them to, but it is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but it's extremely important. Absolutely. Now, now, Councilman Silva, I, I loved when you first appeared on this show because you appeared with, um, two other people who were running for the uh, school district board. Yeah. And obviously education is very important and it has taken a turn now that many things have gone virtual and, and, uh, and hybrid classes in certain areas. Now, when you first appeared, and what I loved about you was that you had this foundation. I remember you talking about fixing the sidewalks. And it was something so basic, but it made sense because when you fix the sidewalks, more people are visible, more people can go out, and it leads to a safer community, which I firmly agree with. But how, how has that changed? And especially now, once we were shut down in March, mid-March, and more people were out, more families were out, did you see that, that community oversight, that we've we talked about on that show uh, yeah i actually i i think i have uh and even like in my own neighborhood i've noticed a lot of um people don't go out as much um so it's it's kind of not uncommon to go down the street and see people just out front and it, like you know chatting with one another uh, i i've gotten a lot of responses from constituents who have concerns of things that otherwise they wouldn't see if they weren't out front, you know what I mean? Like talking lawn to lawn to neighbors. So mm -hmm. it is um, actually, I, I, I got a request the other day to do something about speeding because of that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is, um, yeah, it, I, the more eyes that are on a community, generally the less likely people are to commit crime and then the more likely that they are to be reported. So it's, I think in that regard, like there is, I, I mean, as terrible as this pandemic is, I, I you know, I try to find a, a lighter side whenever possible about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, you know, we're, we're raising a two-year-old. It, it's kind of like the, the world sort of new for her about everything. And then, but it's, you know, uh, but this year, like we, we, we spend a lot more time in the yard, like camping in the yard and gardening and that kind of thing. And and I think a lot of that wouldn't have happened if we would have been, you know, every weekend, every mm -hmm. possible minute, like at a museum or something like that. It, it's, but I think, I think you're right. I think that has impacted, um, like, a sense of community with people being home so much and spending time kind of getting a sense of who their next door neighbors really are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Mayor Keffer, um, and, and this is something that's been on my mind, which is wonderful that, that you're here with us. Since the COVID situation has happened, and, and we are one of the harder hit areas in our county as far as, um, you know, Upper Darby, and I, I'm sure this has been strenuous on you. So how has your focus had to shift? Because you have done an excellent job with communicating with the communities and all the constituents, making sure that we were informed with the correct information, and really being there to support everybody through what they need at this time we have seen the the uh the waste disposal of the municipality uh taking a break because of a covid outbreak uh we have a number of nursing homes in the area so how has how has this driven you to change that conversation to be able to say okay this is where we have to focus our energy rather than your typical probably mayor you know, aspect that you have to follow? It's been 
it's been very challenging this year. We're a new administration, new council, uh, and we've had to unfortunately cancel or postpone a lot of social events like the fun things about local government. But we, I think we're doing a good job in general um, working through through this the COVID this COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. um, we we work very closely with the school district. Mm -hmm in terms of like permitting just so they could you know permitting for our athletic fields mm -hmm. we want to do what the school district is doing so that we're not in conflict um people assume that uh, the school district and the township are kind of the same mm -hmm. which they're not but um but we do have to work together that's been really good the the sanitation uh i guess crisis was was also challenging and i i feel like I, you know, I made a preemptive decision to, um, to, to, um, what's it called? To give the guys two, two weeks off. Uh, uh, quarantine. Thank quarantine. you. <laughs> to I, I think, I think at this point we all want to forget that word. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the, and we're still, we still are, um, working within, uh, uh, COVID mitigation methods at, at the township building. It's closed to the public. People can interact with uh, L and I and to get permits or with the tax office, but they they do it by appointment. Um, we're all wearing our masks when we're not um, in our own separate you know office spaces. Our our council meetings have been um, have been virtual since March 25th, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to go on for another little while. We have a huge council with 11 council people. Um, People are still, our residents are still able to interact with us. We have a very generous uh, email, uh, like question, you know, public forum. Mm -hmm. um, it's like almost, it's, it's at least 24 hours before the actual meeting. So we're doing what we can. And there, at some point there will be an end to this. And we just want to, um, to continue taking uh, COVID seriously mm -hmm. and, and leading by example. And uh, it does make everything move a little bit more slowly than normal, but that's that's just the way it is. It, it is, and it's, it's our new norm. It's something that we have to get used to, and we do have to get used to how this is actually going to affect um, our polling places, which actually, I wanted to ask you a question. I'm going to ask it to you during break, so for the rest of you out there, we will be right back with more drinks with Jess, with Mayor Keffer and Councilman Silva. Stay tuned. The Drinks with Jess is making a big splash. It's time to join forces and step outside of our comfort zones. There is strength in union. It's time for people to tell their stories and make a difference. That is what we aim to do. The Drinks with Jess podcast is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time bringing you amazing guests that cover a wide variety of topics and are inclusive to all cultures and communities. Join us on this amazing journey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. Again, this is Jess Brannis, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Thanks for sticking with us, and a big thank you to Mayor Keffer and Councilman Silva for sticking with me for the rest of the show. Uh, Mayor Keffer, I know we talked about the census and how important it is at the beginning of the show. And since that has been extended to September 30th, what do you think are the most important factors for not just our community, but other local communities at this time? Because I'm sure they have different different demographics than we do. But what does it come down to, besides grants and funding, that the the census will allow the citizens of the United States and the, and the people who reside here, what will that enable their counting within the census to help with? It, it also helps businesses determine whether or not they're going to locate in any, any municipality. Really? Mm -hmm. How so? I never heard of that. The, well, they, they look and see um, what the, the demographics are uh, how many people live in it you know how dense a community is or not um, and they whatever their particular market is whether or not 
fits into the demographics that that are you know spelled out in the census wow i did not know that so like so if like let's say for example so let's say we're eighty six thousand strong here in upper darby and i know that in delaware county in general i think we have a little over half a million people as far as our population is concerned we do have certain plants such as the boeing plant um and, and other of course businesses so if you look at that demographic, if people are part of the census, let's say we have a higher number of, um, you know, Spanish speakers, will that enable a company to say, hey, listen, we need people in this area that can function in this capacity to this community, so let's go there. So that's a way to bring business in, which helps the unemployment situation. Is that correct? Yep, and also I think um, businesses also look at the age demographics. Okay. Like if okay. I don't know children's clothing store is this a good is this a good area to invest in or maybe senior home health care or building a fifty five and over facility that kind of thing so okay so obviously I'm, as we're I'm just learning about this now too I I never I didn't know about the businesses looking at the numbers until this year because yeah well you just taught me something because that that's in, incredible to know especially at, that we're in a time where sooner or later we're, we're trying not only to start the the small businesses back up that were already here but we're trying to build up the communities again because people have been out of work for so long kids have been out of school for for quite a while and i i was a former high school teacher so i i'm sure that could be aggravating not only for kids but for parents, not so much for teachers on my <laughs> end, um, because I can tell you right now, I am very happy that I'm not stepping into a school district at this point. Like, it, you know, I know it's hard for the kids. I know it's where they get their their socialization and and their social skills. But at the same time, it's nice to know that when you make yourself known in your community through something via the census, that that can have that chain reaction effect of businesses coming in and being able to provide and open up that employment following the mitigation and safety orders as they build up. And that's a very interesting um, conversation that I would love to have additional uh, information on. Now, Matt, uh, you being really a, a functioning partner of the community, do you see as far as we're, since we're talking about the census and we're talking about unemployment and, and bringing businesses in, do you see people really struggling right now to kind of get back on the horse and get back into jobs and start being able to feel as if they are a functioning adult again in society and taking care of their families? Because I know that's been a very big worry for a lot of people. Uh, it has been. And, you know, I'd like to credit the mayor too i mean like one of the first things she did once this um this whole crisis kind of took shape was was start like a food drive program or well uh help like share uh i think the it's it's share philadelphia or share pa mm -hmm. they they um we distribute food with them uh every weekend and every wednesday in two different locations and when you see the lines that are there i you realize i, I there is definitely a need and I, people don't want to wait in line. Mm -hmm. They want to. They they you know they they want to they want to produce. They want to help. And 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 I can it, the fact that people have to wait in lines like that the, that 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 the lines are as long as they are. It's it, it is it is kind of a testament to what you're saying. I mean, like the, the there's a need for for people to get back to work. There's a need for people to to you know just have the opportunity to kind of like. Mm -hmm be a part of the uh, be a part of the progress and then um so i i definitely see where where what you're saying with that mm -hmm. i mean i don't i never would have imagined in my lifetime in our lifetimes that this would be our situation our current situation i mean i i, I really it's it's very hard to imagine i'm sure in 1929 with the Great Depression, they didn't imagine it either. But for for communities all across the United States and and even all over the world, I mean, they in Europe. I mean, Europe was shut down. They went through a lot of problems. They have a second wave coming on, and and other communities uh, again across the United States. I mean, this is 
I think something that most people did not imagine occurring. And I think that now is a chance where we have to not only look to our local leadership and, and like I said, you guys have been the great communicators because the buck really was passed to you be, due to the lack of response. I mean, you guys really did have to take control and take the reins and you did so just excellently, I have to say. Like, I am very, very proud of how you handled everything in our township and I hope that other people in other local communities across the nation have had the, the fortunate actions of, of their local administrations as well. But we're Thank getting you. to a point now where it's election time. And I know that, again, like I said at the beginning of the show, people are looking at the presidential elections, which, you know, is my, like, high time in my head. But I want people to focus on the fact that the local elections that take place at the same time are just as important as those national elections. Because right now, it's kind of like before people – used to have a different idea in their head of essential workers. And now it's kind of like, you know, when we used to thank the military for their service, I'm now thanking the grocery store clerks for their service. And it's really kind of taken a turn of, of who is out there really helping the communities and who has to put their lives on the line. And I, I want to get your opinion on the aspect of not just selecting the the national leaders and of of course i mean everybody out there knows who who i'm you know dead set for but the the local administrators and the fact that they actually do have to deal with a lot more than what people obviously always thought of when it came to a mayor or a councilman so what can you put out there to encourage people not only to look at the national elections but look at their local elections yeah, we, we want to encourage people to to be registered and to vote in every election. It should be something that we do as Pennsylvanians, uh, every primary and every general election. Our local elections are in odd years, mm -hmm. so um, that's that's a different challenge. Then that's why we've um, in Upper Darby we've had a really strong ground game, a lot of door knocking, and it, that's that's worked out really well. And, it, and it's it's a great opportunity to meet your neighbors mm -hmm. and sense of for what they feel is important uh, for the community. But this year, I, I think in Pennsylvania, we have um, a chance to definitely narrow the margin uh, for the state uh, representatives and, and and also the state Senate. Mm -hmm. It was important things because they determine how much, what school funding is. Okay. Primarily, that's how I think of it. And um, what else do we have this year? You know, all the congressional races are up. They're mm -hmm. up in years. And, of course, the presidential election, but... Uh, it's and then a lot of the Senate, though, not here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. right. right. Now, with the... Now, obviously, Pennsylvania has been making the news with the mail-in ballot, I'm going to say fiasco right now, uh, depending on how the DOJ is looking at it and Nacho's barking in the background because he... He knows who I'm against. So um, my, my dog has become a political dog. Everybody, he gets, he gets more likes than I do on social media. It's okay. It's okay, Nacho. We're talking politics, buddy. We're, we're on your side, man. We're on your side. It, 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 it's probably a Republican knocking at my door. Um, <laughs> or the mailman, one of the two. He doesn't like either. But, but with the confusion about mail-in ballots, and we're not the only state that is a swing state when it comes to voters this year, but there is a lot of confusion, a little, a little apprehension now about, do I go to the polls? Am I going to be safe? Should I mail in my ballot? Will it get lost? Will it get counted? Will it get thrown out? So what can we say to those out there that are having these concerns with mail-in ballots or how to actually vote? I've talked to a lot of people that are apprehensive about using the mail-in ballots. And, and um, again, like some community, they're going to be apprehensive about, you know, almost any kind of change. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, I haven't talked to anybody that's apprehensive about using the mail-in ballots that's going to sit this one out, but mm -hmm. which, is, which is a plus too. I mean, the most important thing is, is stay safe. I mean, you know what I mean? Whatever, you have to, but, but this is an important election. It's not one to miss. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
if you are going to mail in your ballot, uh, you know, do it as quick as possible. Don't, you know, procrastinate, wait till the last minute or whatever. And even if you get the ballot, um, make like sure you put wife, it in a secret private envelope in the state of Pennsylvania. Well, we're going to, you have to put it in the privacy envelope. And then I believe we're going to have an election box here in Upper Darby. Uh, is that correct? Yes, at the, at the township building. Yeah, so uh, worst case scenario, if you have to get it election day, because I know my uh, my wife's ballot came primary day at 4.30, so there was no way that was going to get counted unless we could take it to, uh, I took it to a polling place, but but I don't even think that's an option this year. So you, you, you want to take it to the township building and put it in the election mailbox. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know I know that I, I believe on, on CNN.com or one of the other news outlets, they actually have a listing state by state of the, you know, regulations and how you can vote and where to get your ballots and how to put your ballots in and make sure everything is counted because we are this year voting for our lives. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. But Mayor Kepper and Councilman Silva, you guys are such a joy. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that uh, – Everybody out there found this informative. I know I sure did, and um, I want you guys to feel free to join me again. And for the rest of you out there, have a good night. All right. Thank you.